Hi, this is Kevin. Welcome to my Beyond the Textbook lecture for uh, Severance Chapter 11. And uh, while we're going over this material, we're going to be referring to programs that I've made available in a project called Demonstrations to Supplement Severance uh, Chapter 11. And you should be able to download those from the weekly schedule of the week that we're in. All right, let's get started. So uh, severance uh, chapter 11 is about regular expressions. I think it's it's a great uh, treatment of the subject. Um, but uh, it leaves a couple things out. Uh, that maybe are not used by beginners all the time. And uh, maybe a feature or two that are maybe after the date of the writing of the chapter. I'm not exactly sure about that. But they're things that we need to know. So um, all the expressions in the, um, in the textbook uh, are just uh, the regular expression pattern expressions are just regular Python strings. And you're going to notice that if you do that same uh, practice, every one of those will be underlined as uh, being a uh, an infraction against the Python style guide. Um, and that's because, well, not everyone, only the ones that include a backslash um, and escaped meta character, which they're pretty popular, right? And so um, the practice these days is to always use a raw string to hold a pattern string. And um, all you have to do to turn a normal string into a raw string is to put a lowercase r right before the string in the same way that we put a lowercase f before a string to turn it into an f string. Okay, so what's a raw string? It's just a string with superpowers. And uh, just like f, f strings or formatting strings are, um, the superpowers that raw strings have is that they don't um, automatically assume that we want to, when you use a backslash, that you're trying to put in an escaped uh, character. And that makes it a lot easier for the syntax of the regular expression pattern language. Okay, so always use a raw string to hold a uh, regular expression pattern. Uh, use it even if the pattern doesn't yet contain a backslash because one is uh, we want it we want our code to be uh, consistent and two we want easy uh, maintenance so if we decide to add in a meta character that has a backslash uh, we don't want to have to go back and all of a sudden turn it into a raw string so Across the board, always use raw strings to hold the patterns. OK, now um, in the textbook, um, it implies, uh, uh, or one might be led to believe, that because the return values from uh, the search and the find all functions can be tested for true or false, that they return a Boolean. But they don't, OK? Um, search returns a match object if it succeeds. It returns a none object when it fails. Find all returns a populated list of all the instances that we found when it succeeds. And find all returns an empty list when it fails. So it turns out that uh, 
we can use truth value testing in order to test the return values um, uh, and we can test them for true or false so in the case of search okay if we found it we have a match object that's going to be true and if we didn't find it we have a none object that's going to evaluate to false in terms of truth value testing or truthiness as the pythonistas like to call this and then if we use find all when it succeeds it um it puts it returns a list that has every instance that it found that satisfy the rule okay so it returns a popular a populated or a non-empty list if it fails if it doesn't find any instances it returns an empty list okay and a populated list has a truth value of true and an empty list has a truth value of false so again we can we can test them for truthiness using a test like ifs okay um, but they do not return a boolean value okay they return truthy values not boolean values okay it's a fine uh, uh, distinction but um, I think it's important to know that under the covers uh, these things are not returning um, boolean values okay they're truthy though and the distinction is pretty narrow uh, next in the um, in the textbook and certainly in the slides that go with the lecture uh, from the textbook there isn't um, a lot of coverage of these shorthand character uh, classes um, you remember that these uh, character uh, classes or sets as they're sometimes uh, called are expressed with these square brackets and then either individual uh, characters or ranges of them okay so for instance uh, if we want um, a character class or set that covers all the digits we could express it um, explicitly by using the square uh, brackets and showing the range 0 to 9 or we could use the shorthand uh, character a class which is a backslash D okay most people probably think that the backslash D is easier to read okay likewise there is a a uh, backslash W the with that will uh, represent any one uh, word uh, character and for the most part that means a character that's not white space okay so that includes uh, the capital alphabetics the lowercase alphabetics uh, the digits and the underscore apparently the underscore works in here um, and um, uh, so these are these are going to help us um, uh, help us come up with expressions that allow us to identify uh, the words okay and then uh, the backslash lowercase s is any white space uh, character which of course includes space but also uh, tab return new line and form feed these are white space uh, characters that we don't see um, as a tab return new line and form theme but they do affect the formatting of the document okay and again uh, this uh, a backslash s is a pretty uh, succinct way to express that and then each of these have a negated version so the negated version of the digit is backslash capital D 
So it means the opposite it means not any digit. So anything but a digit. We have a, a backslash capital W, which means uh, anything but a word uh, character. These appear being the word characters. And the backslash capital S means anything but a white space uh, character. And again, the white space uh, characters being the space, the tab, the return, the new line, and the form fee. Okay, so you can use these expressions to uh, kind of simplify your code and not have you not have to create a lot of these uh, class expressions or set expressions. Okay, and I, I didn't think that was uh, covered that well in the chapter. Um, the title of this slide you can use as a link and it takes you to a site that I try to talk up in several uh, places. It's called regularexpressions.info, um, regular-expressions.info. It's a great website. Um, it was created by, um, by the person who uh, wrote um, the regular expressions the cookbook, um, which is a very popular O'Reilly uh, publication, uh, his name uh, is something like Jan Goiverts, okay? Except that the way that you say uh, Goiverts in Dutch is uh, kind of idiomatic uh, Dutch and not uh, phonetic, okay? Uh, so this is a great site, and this is where I got the information on these uh, uh, character uh, classes, and you can find more information. Okay? All right. Proper attribution there. Okay, so um, um, for some people, figuring out how to how to uh, write regular expression patterns that uh, test compound yeah, yeah, conditions, well, they're kind of easy for them. And for others, they're more uh, challenging. And uh, we don't expressly talk about it um, in the chapter. So I'm going to talk about it here. OK, so um, by compound regular expression uh, patterns, I mean a pattern that matches, you know, A and B. That's an and. Or uh, a pattern that, you know, that matches A or B. That's an or. So a logical and or a logical or. Okay. We have ways to express both of them right in the expression itself, right in the pattern string. We don't have to resort to, say, having two pattern strings and combining them with the Python and and or logical operators. Now, uh, I'll say that um, with the following uh, caveat. Um, I'm going to show you in this uh, example uh, program that it's easy to express an N and it's easy to express an OR. But if you had a really complex uh, logical combination of things, you might do some of the parts in the expression in, in the pattern strings themselves, and you might combine those with uh, Python ends and ors, right? So um, you might have to resort to that. But for simple things, you can just write the expression in the way that supports an and or an or, OK? And um, w what we're going to find out is the, uh, uh, the logical end is just implicit in the patterns. As you continue the pattern, it means end this too. OK, so we have the part on the left, and then we have a part on the right. Well, and that has to be true too. So um, as you continue 
one of these uh, patterns, it's implicitly the beginning on the left and the end on the right. Okay. So and is implicit or is explicit. And what you do is you have the part of the pattern on the left and then you use this vertical bar or pipe uh, symbol, which on my keyboard is an uppercase backslash. OK, and this means or and this means or in a lot of programming languages as well. Uh, most notably for me, uh, PL1, <laughs> okay, which is an old programming language that I learned, well, over 40 years ago. Let's say that. Uh, okay, so let's get some in examples uh, to learn by. So uh, this is in uh, a program uh, a 10, forming compound RE patterns. So we're going to go find that and open it. OK. And here it is. Let's give us a little more room and make it a little bigger. Let me just make the text a little bit bigger. So um, uh, we have a doc string. It demonstrate methods for forming compound regular expression uh, patterns in Python. That's what we're doing. Um, and uh, this is interesting because I started with imp uh, from RE input search. And now it says import RE. I don't know how I got them both. But here's uh, well. If this is helpful. A lot of people just import RE. Okay, that's the regular expression uh, package. If you import RE, every time you use a function or a constant or anything from the package, uh, you have to prefix it with RE dot. Okay, and importing whole packages is considered a uh, bad form. Okay, it's considered better form and practice to do what we've done here. So I'm going to get rid of this line two right now, which probably is not going to show up in your solution. OK, and now it just says from RE import search. OK. Oh, and then I said RE search. OK, well, I'll tell you what. For right now, I'm going to change this back. OK, I'm going to do the import RE version. I have another example program I want to show you where I say from RE import whatever we're going to use. And this way, I'll be able to show them both to you. OK, so we're going to get rid of that one. We're just going to do the blanket import for RE. OK, uh, maybe not the best practice, but a lot of people do it. OK, so now every time we use uh, the search function, we're going to have to call it re.search. OK, so we're going to use re.search in order to look for things in a quote uh, from the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And um, the quote is this, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. And I think that's really a great uh, quote and one that has a lot of insight. Um, so I decided to choose that. And if you want the, the place where I got the quote, I have a link here. It's part of the website for uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. National Monument. Um, so here's what I did. I have the straight quote, which I call quote. OK, and then I have the same string with just a trailing asterisk added. Let's just go over to the end. See, I just added an asterisk here and I called that variable quote with trailing asterisk. And then I have the same one with a leading asterisk. It doesn't have a trailing one. So 
it's the same quote there and then I'm going to look at that so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to do one of my typical thing where I put a lot of the code into a into a comment so we can kind of uh, discover the code as we go right so uh, here I uh, I uh, I created the three strings and now I I print the three strings so when we print this uh, we're going to see the three versions um, here's the real version that hasn't been marked up at all true peace is not merely the absence of tension it is the presence of justice and then we've got the second version which uh, uh, no longer begins with the word true because we precede it with an asterisk and then we've got the third version which no longer ends with the word justice because we added that extra asterisk and this is going to allow us to test some ends and wars okay all right so go let's just go do some of the testing so here's our first uh, test okay um, we're going to test a quote just uh, the regular one for begins with true okay so uh, we say if re search and then we have a raw string for the pattern and we have the circumflexor hat in the beginning that says begin at the beginning of the string and then we've got a capital T R U E and the, we're uh, testing against uh, quote we're expecting that to pass okay and uh, to return a match object which um, is in a truthiness or truth value testing sense it's going to be true so we're going to expect to print test passed and let's give this a run and it says test passed just what we expected okay all right now we're going to go on to our second demonstration uh, we're going to test the quote for ends with justice period okay so if we say if re search and then we say justice period dollar sign uh, okay matches the end of the string we're matching quote and again we expect to get a match object back because it succeeded and we're expecting to print uh, past and let's uh, do that and we can see here test quotes for ends with justice period test passed that's good okay now here's the next one this is the implicit end okay so here's what we want to do we want to test the quote for begins with true and ends with justice period okay so how do we do this well um, we do all the regular stuff where we create the raw string and we have a circumflex or a hat true at the, at the beginning we've got justice period dollar sign at the end and then we just have to find a way an expression that it goes in the middle um, that will describe the characters between them and we want that to be as flexible as uh, possible so we use the dot to mean any character and we use the asterisk to say zero to many so um, what I'm trying to point out here with the example is these three things are ended together true at the beginning of the word justice period at the end of the word and many characters in the middle it's a true and many characters and justice okay so you just keep writing the rule that's how you get your end okay um so whatever 
components the rule has, if it continues on, implicitly all the things that you describe have to be true. Each one of them has to be true. They're all ended together. Okay, so let's take a look at that. We're going to expect that to be true as well. And we can see uh, the quote, um, the quote for, I don't know why it says the quote for. It says uh, the quote for uh, begins with true and ends with uh, justice, uh, period. So I don't know why we have the word for there. <laughs> I somehow that, that uh, crept in and I kept uh, uh, copying it. Okay, so and is easy. You just keep writing the rule and, and it has to meet everything. It's all ended. All the conditions have to be met. So how do you do or? Okay, or it's not too hard either. Okay, so um, here's what I wanted to do. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to test this asterisk before version of the quote for uh, begins with true or ends with uh, justice. Okay, so if we go back up and look at this, okay, the asterisk before one, um, uh, uh, the leading one, okay, it doesn't begin with true anymore, but it does end with a justice uh, period. The, the asterisk after one, the trailing one, right, well, it begins with true, but it doesn't end with justice uh, period because it ends with asterisk. Okay, so what we would like to do is we would like to test both of these and make sure that the for version uh, catches them both. Okay, it catches the one where we only match at the end and catches the one uh, uh, the one where we only match at the end, that one there, and catches the one where we only match at the beginning. So let's go down and just do the last two together, okay? So um, here's the rule that we're using. Um, we just, uh, we have uh, the two rules, the one for begins with true and the one for ends with uh, a justice uh, period, and we just join them with this vertical bar, which I sometimes call the OR bar, and people from Unix and Linux call the pipe. Again, it's the uh, vertical bar that on my keyboard is the uppercase backslash, okay? And that means the OR. So, uh, meets the first uh, part of the pattern or the second. Okay, and uh, we've got the same one in both uh, cases, and we should we should catch it in uh, both. So let's give it a run, and we're going to see that those both uh, passed. Uh, okay, so and is implicit; you just keep on writing the rule. And or is explicit, use the or bar or pipe, whatever you would like to call it. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, there's one more feature that I didn't know about for a while. And it was introduced to me by a student. And then I did some research and found out that ooh, a lot of people know about this and it's a great feature. And this has to do with when you're looking for matches and you don't care about the case, okay? Um, this is particularly helpful when you're looking for, say, common words inside of a typed uh, password, right? Um, so, um, uh, what the old programmer trick for doing this is you, you, um, 
you take the text that you're trying to test and you shift it all to lowercase and then you express your pattern in lowercase right so since you shifted the text to lower and you're testing for lower no matter what um, a case the original string was in it's going to match the lowercase version of the pattern okay and this is the old programmer trick approach okay now rather than that um, you can use this flag parameter that's what they call it in the documentation a flag parameter it's a special indicator that you say oh by the way when you're interpreting my rule and comparing it to the string uh, ignore the case it differences between uh, the rule or a pattern and the string okay and uh, what we do is we use the ignore case constant from the re package okay so if we've imported re on the whole well then we refer to it as re dot ignore case if we say uh, from re import uh, uh, find all comma ignore case well then we just say ignore case because we don't have to prepend in our e dot okay now um i believe and a lot of people do that this is a better uh, documentation than having used the programmer trick of shifting the string with lowercase which is oh i think i still have that in, in some of my uh tutorials I don't think my uh, tutorials have this ignore case in it yet, although uh, they will soon. Okay. The other thing is if you're extracting uh, text, right, um, and you've, you have uh, shifted it all with down to lower case, well, what you've extracted is not the original text okay you lose the case structure of the original text now that might be what you want okay and often it's what you want if you're doing things like word counting or something like that uh, but you may want to show it actually was uh, typed in and I, I, I will uh, show you this in these example uh, programs so the example programs that we have are uh, uh, 20 ignore case using uh, a call to lower on a string this is the conventional programmer trick way to do it and then we've got 30 ignoring the case using re ignore case so let's take a look at 20 and 30 okay so we're going to close that and uh, let's close this and open up number 20 where we're going to use uh, uh, the string a call to lower. Okay, and in this case, I'm doing something that I've only been doing a little bit more recently. It is, uh, I'm not importing all of the RE package. I'm just saying from RE import find all. That's all that I use. That's uh, that's that's the best uh, practice so now when I call find all like I do uh, down here I uh, I don't prepend an re dot okay yep because it's now known as find all okay so here's what I'm doing I'm uh, prompting the user for input um, and I'm saying please enter a text sample and I put that into response okay and I do a find all on that and the pattern I'm looking for is justice we're going to take the theme from the last uh, quote that we did from uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and um, and what are we comparing it to well we've we've taken the string response and shifted it to lower 
okay so now what do we get back well we get back a list okay called instances and this is a good case to uh, test it in a truthy way okay truth value testing so we say if not instances which is uh, to say if the instances list is empty print there were no instances of the word justice in the sample else print the following instances of the word justice were found in the sample and then we say for instance and instances print instance Okay, so let's give this a run and see what how it works. Okay, so uh, let's do this. Um, we could say uh, there is no peace without justice, which has a, a, a paraphrase of uh, the king uh, quote and then we could say um, um, peace will not come until we have and let's put justice in all caps okay because we really want to emphasize that until we have uh, justice so let's enter this okay and it said the following instances of the word uh, justice were found in the sample justice justice but as you can see we've lost um their case st structure they both look the same they're all lower case okay and that might be what we're looking for <laughs> Okay, that's entirely possible. Maybe we're going to go and uh, do word uh, counting with this. Uh, you know, we're doing some kind of word frequency analysis. Well, then that's okay. Uh, but if we want to see what it looked like in the original text, well, we've lost that. Okay. Uh, and now the other thing we can do is we can say something that has no instances of the word uh, uh, justice at all. Um, uh, we could uh, type in wet birds never fly at night. There were no instances of the word uh, uh, justice in the sample. Okay. Um, so that works. That's uh, consistent with the way I was uh, teaching this uh, several years ago. It may be consistent with some of the uh, tutorials I'm still using, but I think it's a lost opportunity, and here's why. Let's take a look at this 30 ignore, ignoring case using our ignore case. So here we are. So we're doing the... Um, we're doing the more uh, sort of the better practice import. Uh, we say from RE import find all comma ignore case. Ignore case is a, a constant. It probably um, it's probably an integer value. I, I, I don't know what the value is. Um, well, we could find out. Um, we just would have to print it. Okay, so we do the same thing. We're going to prompt the user, please enter a text a sample. Uh, we, we call find all. Uh, we're looking for the word justice in response, not shifted. And we just include this uh, flag as a parameter, ignore case. Okay, okay, it comes right after the response. And then we've got the same code down here. So the only thing we've changed is, you know, the shifting and the ignore case. Now let's look at how differently they operate. So um, 
we could say uh, justice is necessary uh, for peace. And we could say if we want peace, we need endless uh, change the case justice. We need justice. Okay, so we say that. And as you can see here, uh, we haven't shifted the text. So when we extract it, um, we're getting the original uh, capitalization. And again, we may either want that or we don't want that. Okay. But the nice thing here is that at least we have the opportunity for this. If we wanted to shift it, it down before we did some further processing, we could, but we would be showing exactly what we found. Uh, the other thing that I like about this, and, I, and, and from my reading, I can tell that a lot of other people do too, is that when you read this, this uh, all caps ignore case, uh, it's hard to miss that you're ignoring the case. Whereas if we go back to the prior version, um, uh, maybe easier to miss that. Okay. It's especially easier to uh, miss this if you do the following thing. Some people will do this in two steps. They'll say, response gets the value response lower okay so they'll do that okay and then when you look at the the call to find all it it's not well documented at all okay so um again the original version a little more readable than that but the version where we're using the ignore case uh, flag, I think that's the best. And of course, we get more functionality from it. So I'm going to recommend that you use that. That is it. Okay, so I'm just going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.